The other day, I was moving some stuff around in my shop with my tractor, and after I took the tractor out uh, and parked it, when I came back in, I found this on the floor. Uh, the handle to my cutoff saw. So I started looking around to see if I could find out who did it. Well obviously I'm the only one here so it must have been me. I was going to uh, just braze or weld the handle back on but uh, with the proximity to the door I figure uh, that might just happen again. So what I want to do is drill a hole through the top portion here, drill and tap the end of this, put a number 10 screw through there, uh, AN, uh, and then be able to push that through uh, with a hairpin on the back side. That way I can remove it uh, just to alleviate that chance again. So uh, let me show you how I'm going to do that. So here we have the broken part. Uh, I'm going to have to face this off, uh, drill and tap it for that 1032 screw, uh, get that in there and cut the head off and put a hairpin through there uh, so I can remove it whenever I want. And as you can see, the handle is quite convoluted. So what I'm gonna do is measure this end and bore this nut out so it will be a slip fit on there. It's very close right now. I may not do anything. Yeah, that, that's pretty close, but I do have to see this surface, the surface of the uh, handle. But the larger end is 690 thousandths. So what I'm gonna have to do is turn this nut to 690 thousandths, slide it on here, chuck it up in the lathe, and then I can face, drill, and tap. Uh, so let's get over to the lathe and see that done. So the first thing to do is touch off uh, set the dial to zero and then start turning this nut down to 690 thousandths. about two over.
And there we are. Right on. Okay, let me get this thing off of here. Uh, get it pressed on to the knob. And uh, then we'll face this off and drill and tap the end. So here I've got the, the bushing and the, uh, the handle itself that I have to turn this broken piece off. So I'm just going to slide the bushing on, slide it into the chuck, make sure that I have enough for the to get a good clean face off of there. Tighten it down and start turning. Next, to drill and tap. Okay, I've got that starting tap bottomed. Now I'm going to go back in there with a bottoming tap. 
clean up the bottom of those threads. There we go, bottomed. Let's check to make sure the bolt goes all the way in. bottomed so this part is done okay the next thing I want to do is part this little bolt off and you can see that I've got my parting tool just as close as I can get it to the chuck so I have the least amount of stick out on the bolt as I can get so I'm going to push that head right up against it, tighten it down, pull it out, and start parting. out a little bit and put it in my radius tool I'm going to make a hairpin to keep this in place. So the next thing I need to do is drill a sixteenth uh, of an inch hole, or at least a clearance for a sixteenth uh, stainless steel wire. Okay, so what I have done is I took this over on the cutoff saw, uh, measured from the end of the threaded part that will go into the handle and this little dot here will clear the ball that's on the end of the handle that's on the uh, cutoff saw and I put a piece of tape on there so I can hold this from beneath the vise I'm going to hold this just below the surface, tighten it up pretty good, and one of the things that the uh, tape is doing, I'm using a 3 uh, punch to mark where I want to drill the hole. So with the tape, this is actually 3 16 the bolt is 3 16 and by using the tape I can use the vise 
as a centering device. Okay, I've got a good center punch in there. Um, I'm going to focus the camera. Um, I'm going to drill this uh, a clearance for a sixteenth of an inch, uh, and that's the stainless steel wire I'll be making the hairpin out of. Uh, I'm not going to show you the drilling because it'll probably take six or seven takes and I'll probably break three to four drills. So uh, you can do that all by yourself. You don't want, need to watch me do that. So here is the piece complete. Uh, I didn't break any drills uh, and the hole is pretty well straight through even though I drilled it by hand. Uh, but I must confess that just before I broke through, I stopped and resharpened this uh, 564 drill. Um, and let me show you why. If you're drilling through flat stock with a standard taper, This is going to continually widen as this taper comes through. If you're drilling on a round and you have a sharp taper, you have all the way from where it breaks through all the way to here that the drill is going to have a chance to grab as it's coming through this uh, outer side here. On a round If you decrease the angle where it starts coming through, you have a very small amount, plus it's supporting the drill for a longer period of time. Okay, so just by stopping and uh, resharpening the drill, I also decreased the rake a little bit so it didn't want to grab and and pull, its, pull itself through. So uh, I hope that might be a little tip for you. Uh, so the next thing to do is bend up a hairpin. So when I slide uh, this portion into the handle, I can put a hairpin through here and it won't come out. Okay, so what I have is a piece of uh, 316L uh, welding rod, 16th inch diameter, and I'm going to make a hairpin that will slide here through this hole and keep it on the handle of the uh, cutoff saw uh, until I want to remove it so I don't bust it off again. So making one of these hairpins is fairly straightforward. There's the first bend. Second bend. Third bend. Let me straighten that out a little. Okay, the next one is right about here. Let 
This one I want up a little bit more. Just about there. I want to bring this down some and I'm going to have to do that in the vise. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got this little piece here sticking out so it will jump over the outside of the uh, major diameter. I like to cut this piece here a little bit long so it'll start in the hole before I start coming over that little snapped area. Now I'll deburr both of these ends. And there it is. I think it'd be a little bit tighter. There you go. Now it snaps right in there. All right. So let me deburr these and we'll fit this to the machine. So here's the handle that we just repaired. Uh, I put some Loctite on the screw when I put that in there so I don't have to worry about this coming off. And I've already drilled the 3 16 hole through here. So I just put that in, put a sacrificial washer on there so the back end of this part is not rubbing on this stainless steel pin. Snap that in there. Pull it off. And that'll probably live right there. So that's it. My saw is finally repaired. See you later.